I'm working on a new painting, it's a white iris flower, so I thought I would share with you the drawing process that I used to get this done. And I'm working on a 12 by 12 centimeter piece of uh, 300 GSM watercolor paper. And the first thing that I do is I make sure that I've got the center of each of the petals. I can count five white petals on the photo that I'm using. So all I do is kind of locate where those petals are going to be, the directions they're going in. So I just use some very simple pencil lines to do this, um, like a spine. I often call it the spine of the leaf or the spine of the flower. You might call it a center line. And these are just very, very simple, very, very light lines because they're going to be the kind of skeleton framework that I'm going to hang all the detail on. So you can see me now on the left-hand side, I'm beginning to add some definition. I'm starting to kind of try and show the shape of the petals. And, you know, I'm looking at the photograph and I'm sort of decoding it as well because there's some petals hidden in there that look as though they're in front of or behind of other ones. So I'm trying to get those right and make sure I've got the, the kind of 3D and perspective in just line and shape before I even go anywhere near putting paints and, you know, trying to make it look three-dimensional with those. And to demonstrate this, I thought that I would use a slightly softer pencil than usual. I'm using a B lead in this mechanical pencil. Usually I draw things using a 2H pencil, especially when it's watercolor, because I don't want the pencil lines showing up. I want the watercolor to show the edge of shapes and leaves and flowers and petals. I don't want the pencil lines to do that. So I really try and work as lightly as possible, so they're really, really not going to show when I add the paint. So usually I'm using a 2H, but I thought I'd try and demonstrate this using a B, and hopefully I'd get a slightly um, darker line that was clearer for you to see, but it's still quite faint, I admit that. And I'm sorry, it's just old habits die hard, and I'm just so used to doing it as lightly as possible. Even with the B lead in here, I think it's still a little, uh, a little light. I think what I might try and do in future is do one using an even softer pencil, like a 2B or a 3B, so that you can really see the pencil lines a lot more clearly. And then I'll just kind of rub them down gently with a rubber before I begin to paint, so I'll make them lighter. And here you can see me use one of the petals I've already drawn, uh, sort of pop over to it and then draw a kind of a guideline and a dot down towards the left. And that's just making sure, looking at the photo, comparing the petals, comparing the lengths, making sure I'm putting one um, the right length down, you know, as compared to one of the other petals. So trying to get them all in proportion and correct when compared to each other. I'm still trying to keep it loose and light at this stage. I don't want to go in and start adding too much detail. Um, I want to keep it fairly simple. Uh, there's always time for that later. I want to try and make sure that basically I've got all of the, the leaves and the petals in the right places and the right positions first before I go in and do what I call a refining stage and adding uh, much more you know, detailed shaping to the basics that I've got so far. And it's at this point where my daughter decided to wake up when I was trying to get this drawing done while she was asleep. So I had to stop it and come back to it later. So after a short interlude, I was able to come back to the drawing and uh, work on getting the shaping for these petals. And again, and what I'm working on here is trying to make sure they get the lovely soft organic curve of the petals. But also, because it's an iris, it's got quite a lot of kind of folded and jaggedness to the edge of both the petals, both the white petals and the yellow petals. One of the next things that I decided to draw in was the stem. It's got quite a thick stem of these green kind of leaves wrapping around each other because uh, I'm trying to work from left to right in the drawing, because I'm right-handed, uh, I don't want to try and smudge any of the work that I've already done. So after putting in the kind of uh, the, the central lines, the spines of each of the leaves and petals, I've tried to work from left to right as best as I can. It doesn't always work that way, but that's what I was trying to do. And again, that's just to avoid smudging, which is even more of a consideration when you're using a softer pencil, like a 2B and upwards, um, you know, they smudge at the drop of a hat. And these longer petals are a little bit easier to do because they're pretty much, you know, thin at the base and then get nice and fat towards uh, the outer part of the petal. Uh, and there's not too much of it curving over and, and giving me some weird kind of perspective and, and depth issues that I've got to deal with. So they're fairly simple and easy to do. And here you see me use the tip of one of the petals I've already drawn to help me judge how uh, long the petal next to it has to be. It's a little bit taller than it, so I just kind of go diagonally up and leave a little dash, which allows me to kind of plot where the end of that petal, the tip of that petal, is going to be when I'm drawing it. It is a bit more of a challenge trying to draw this in a 12 by 12 centimeter square that I'm trying to do because it's actually on a reference photograph that's got a slightly more uh, portrait format to it. 
so it's kind of longer so I'm, I'm squashing it a little bit to try and make it fit into this square um, but I was I was kind of happy to do that because I wanted it to be part of a square because the other ones that I've done in the last year the tulip paintings uh, those have all been in a 12 by 12 square as well so I, I was just trying to make sure that this would fit into that series with them so with the shapes pretty much done and I'm happy with them now is the point where I refine my pencils um, and what I mean by that is I'm looking much more closely at the shape of the petals in the photograph and I'm trying to use the pencil to make those um, make the individual shapes of each petal and leaf much more defined and much clearer um, than just leaving it as a basic kind of bold shape. So hopefully you can see as I'm working my way through this, the, the petals and the leaves are beginning to you know, look more like they are the petals and leaves. And the iris has got, like I said, those very jagged kind of edges, a very distinctive shape to the edge of their petals. They're not smooth um, at all. So I'm really trying to show that through the pencils at this stage. And also, you know, tweak some of my 3D um, shaping and, and make sure it's a lot clearer before I start to paint. I don't put in any details on the leaves, such as some of the lines and creases, because I want to do that when I actually get to the paint. And I want to use, uh, you know, maybe a fine brush to put on some of those little lines and creases that you always get in a petal as it's like growing and beginning to, you know, unfurl. You'll get those, but I want to put those in with paint later. So my main aim here is to make sure that the shapes of the petals are accurate enough for me to start painting confidently. Uh, but also, you know, I'll look at this before I start to paint, and if I think some of the pencil lines are a little bit too heavy, a little bit too strong, I can just take a putty rubber or a soft eraser to them and gently rub over it. I'm not looking to rub it out, I'll just rub over the pencil lines, basically kind of just trying to fade them out a little bit uh, before I start to paint. So that's pretty much it. That is how I would go about drawing any of the flowers that I ever draw and then paint. Uh, I hope that this was useful to you. Um, don't forget to subscribe and also leave a comment below uh, whether you found the, the video helpful, something else you'd like to see in future. And also you could check out my last video. There's links below for that. And that is um, basically showing in real time how I had a go at doing a magnolia flower using the uh, Winsor Newton pigment markers, in particular the white blender pen.